Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome to the Aston Villa career mode. This is episode Sabah. Apparently, that is seven in Lebanese. Thank you very much for letting me know your language in the comments down below. Once again, episode eight, I need your help. I can't speak languages, so apparently, I need your help to let me know about the numbers. Thank you very much in the comments down below. As always, guys, welcome back to the Aston Villa career mode, in which we basically are Watkins and Green. FC. Yes, that has been a comment in the last episode as well. And uh, it, it is kind of true at the moment. Grealish and Watkins are carrying the squad. Just take a look right here. Grealish number one, Watkins number two, and the top goal scorers in the Premier League. And if you guys are loving that, if you are loving that site, and of course, if you want to help our channel grow, please make sure to hit the like button on this video. That'd be very, very much appreciated, guys. Keep up the support. I am so happy today because today I am getting my gym equipment for, for home because my gym has closed for another four weeks. I'm going to be so sad and I'm going to try and not lose everything I worked so hard for. So only one thing is I will not be allowed to drop the weights. Otherwise, uh, if I drop the weights and I make big sounds, I think my wife might just kill me. Simple as that. So today we're starting off against uh, Ward Prowse FC, I should say, or Danny Ings FC. So we have the battle of two midfielders and two strikers coming up against Southampton, in which obviously Danny Ings will be up against Watkins and then Grealish up against Ward Prowse. Uh, there's a couple of videos coming in for today's episode. Thank you guys once again for all the great videos that you're sending on Instagram. Link in the description down below as always. And here is one that considered the positioning of Ross Barkley or what we do after Barkley is done. Here's the video. Hi Chani, really enjoying the series, but I was just wondering about Ross Barkley and what you're going to do when he goes back to Chelsea. Will you go change the formation to a 4-3-3 with the cam to accommodate for Jack Grealish and perhaps a few more midfielders to uh, help Nakamba? Or will you stick with the same formation and perhaps stick Cherky in there? to boost his potential just wondering what you were doing on that good luck with the series so what i'm technically thinking about doing once ross barkley is done i think i want to have a little bit more of a defensive setup i want to bring in someone that's going to help nakamba defensively because once we get to a higher level and we want to achieve more I think it's going to be a little bit hard for us to have only one defensive midfielder who i mean has to do so much so I don't think that's a good thing to do. I need to improve our team defensively. So once Ross Barkley is gone, unless we bring him back, we will have to go ahead and bring in another center defensive midfielder or play Douglas Luiz. By the way, EA have put in new pictures, I'm just realizing. I think that's a new picture for Douglas Luiz. A bunch of new pictures in general. There's a new patch that came out just today. So just in case, uh, yeah, Bradaric has a new picture. I like this old picture a lot more. He looks... He looks like he has ice in his veins right now, but I guess that's what you need to have when you're a good fullback. Um, so yeah, a lot of new pictures in the game, as you guys can tell. I don't know if there are new face scans or not. That would be very nice if they do have that. Cherky also with a new picture. Um, he doesn't look as much as Jared HD on this one, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, good thing though. Fuchs and Mendes now have pictures. So Mendes has got, gotten a picture now and Fuchs has one as well. So my God, this guy is smiling at me big time. All right, I like it. Now, I think, uh, let me just check if I've put them into the reserves team already. They should be in there. Yes, they are in there. So Fuchs and Mendes are already in there. And uh, of course, Solomon is playing at Cam in that team. I think our reserves team is genuinely looking class. I think it looks very, very good, guys. And we need to keep it up. Now, today's episode, as I mentioned, we're going to be up against Southampton. And then we have Chelsea coming up. And then the month of October will be done. And we'll move against Leeds United, who yesterday have lost against Leicester City. They started off by going 2-0 down. A huge chance wasted by Bamford, which led to the first goal of Leicester City. Bamford had multiple huge chances in that game. And once again, it just shows that maybe, just maybe, he might not be good enough for the Premier League. I don't know, but I, he just missed such sitters there. 
where you just expect the striker to score. So I don't know. I'll give I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because he has done so well throughout this season so far. I think Rodrigo was not allowed to play for Leeds United because he had to self isolate. So uh, that wasn't really helpful for them. Now, last episode we have gotten two draws against two massive teams. Hopefully today we can start winning games again, and that is exactly what we're going to get into for today. Also, there's a comment right here from Agozi in Vogbo, and he says, Hey Johnny, I'm a Manchester United fan, but I agree whenever Oli is on the verge of being sacked, then he goes on to win like four games in a row. I don't see Oli as the right man for United. A lot of people have been discussing this type of stuff in my comments down below. I personally, again, will forever say I don't think Oli is going to get United any major trophies and uh, you guys will have to move, move on. And saying that, Pochettino yesterday was on Sky Sports uh, he looked slick, man. He looks ready. He looks ready to take over the job. Long hair Poch is looking slick. I like it. As we get into this game against Southampton, we have a comment that comes in at the perfect time. It is a comment from our dear man who is named Cathal. And he says, hey, Johnny, I think you should sign James Ward-Prowse as I think he would be a class player to sign. You know what? I'm not against it. If Ross Barkley leaves our team, I think James Ward-Prowse would be a good option to have. So we're going to step into this game, hopefully get a good result. Three points would be massive for our squad as we have been struggling to pick up three points lately. We are in the top 10 as Aston Villa, which I'm extremely pleased with. And I hope we can continue that type of stuff moving on. But I think Bradaric has gotten a little bit of hair growth as well on his player model. Interesting. Maybe a few more things have changed in this game that we can take a look at uh, moving forward. But right now, we got to focus on these three points. Jack Grealish and the boys, Bradarish. Now, down that wing, Watkins, get in there, son. Headed Watkins. Ah, oh, that's not good enough. It was a good cross, though. Bradaric, again, my favorite defender, potentially. Especially in terms of fullbacks, he's definitely my favorite. Matty Cash doesn't get under the same level for me. Um, Bradaric has been so solid defensively and moving forward. Love that player. We're going to keep him forever and grow him as much as we can. Oh, there goes Cash. And now Ross Barkley making a diagonal, a, a diagonal, a straight run down the wing. <laughs> that is not diagonal at all. And here goes the pass inside. Jack Grealish passes it over. Watkins, the partnership of dreams. What's up, Ward Prowse? What's up, Danny Ings? We are here now. We are here to take these points. Aston Villa at home. Let's go, lads. Watkins with the goal. Jack Grealish with the assist. The perfect combination. Running down the wing with Barkley and then cutting back inside and finding the space. That is the play that we needed. Grealish against two. Gets the ball across. Watkins completely by himself. Beautiful scenes right here as Watkins gets his eighth goal of the season. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the simulation right now and uh, we're going to watch the game there. If anything happens, we might have to step in and get things done. But this feature, I love it. I freaking love this feature, EA. It's such a nice way to still be engaged in the game, not just skip it. I love it. It's so nice. It's actually interesting to see how our team plays without me now for the first time. Uh, because we have never really seen this. So I'm kind of excited to see who makes what types of runs, how the team plays in this formation. Is it defensively good enough? But Adaric right there picking up a good interception. It just seems like we are shifting the ball down to the wings a lot when the AI is um, taking over our squad. So that's something to maybe potentially do a lot more ourselves because normally the AI always finds the best way to get around teams and that is uh, most of the time us using the right wing it seems the right wing with <clears throat> Matty Cash and Traore seems to be the most effective way for us to get around our opponents now Tyron Mings I need you uh, I need him in there man Mings is as tall as he is it's quite disappointing to see that he never really get it gets involved in these corner kicks by the way guys let me know in the comments down below what is the Champions League matchup that you are looking forward the most this week I am personally um, waiting anxiously to see what Liverpool is going to do against Atalanta. That game is massive. Atalanta has such a great attacking play style. Oh, we might concede here. Oh, great defending. Matty Cash stepping up and defending. Nicely done. But yeah, I can't wait for that game. Apparently, Thiago Alcantara and Matip are back into the training sessions fully now with the squad. So we could potentially be looking at the defense of Gomez and Matip and also Thiago in midfield. I really hope it happens. I really, really hope it happens. It would be a beautiful sight to see in the Champions League. I think Thiago could boss the midfield against Atalanta there and help us out massively. We got to play it down the right. There's space. Oh, Grealish, that's class. 
Batron, come on, man. It's got to be better. You know what? We're going to make some changes here in this game. We're going to bring on the boys that can potentially have an impact. It's going to be El Ghazi, Wesley, actually taking over Watkins' position. And then I will probably bring on... Do I bring on Cantwell? Let's go with Cantwell down the left-hand side and see what he does. Southampton so far with zero shots and zero chances. Our defense has been bossing Danny Ings and his teammates. And it's a great sight to see. Especially nice to see that Matty Cash has had a good impact on the defense for once. Oh, that's great. That's great. Oh, that didn't go in. It is actually the defender uh, making a good save there. Mings actually was supposed to get that one. Mings again on the ball. Mings doesn't know what to do. Plays it to Barkley, plays it to Cash. Cash now down the wings, but the cross inside. And I believe that was our right midfielder with the header. Not good enough, sadly, to score. And it is going to be the last few minutes of the game as our opponents are moving forward. Nah, man, I'm taking over. I'm not allowing them to score here in the late minutes. This is not happening. We cannot allow this to happen. Please. Come on, Johnny. You can do this. Don't just take over and then concede as well. That would be terrible. But this is the 90 plus first minute. 90 plus one. Yes, there we go. Now, come on. No, what did I do? Johnny, wake up, mate. Ref, he's playing it back. Ref, blow the whistle. You can't give them a corner kick. It's 90 plus three. Ref. You're joking. You have to be joking. Tyron Mings, gonna go for this and head it away. Referee, please, can we end this game? Please, it's 90 plus four. This is ridiculous. Mings again. Mings again. This time, Bradaric kicks it away. Ref, ref, thank you. 90 plus four, man. That, that is how long it took for this game to be done. But Aston Villa have carried the result over the line. It's only 1-0, but it's fine, people. It is fine. No reason to be upset. We take the three points out of this game, as we should have. Very happy with this result, which will hopefully propel us into potentially the eighth or seventh position. So that would be nice progress for our team. Watkins with the only chance of the game right there for our team that was actually proper. And that was great play. Watkins and Grealish still on fire. So a lot of people are saying one thing in specific when it comes to development plans. You guys need to watch this video and then I'll be right back. Hi, Chinese Sports. Um, you're doing really well right now with the career mode. Um, one thing that I'm suggesting is that the reason why Ryan Cherky isn't really improving is because you don't have him on a development plan. So as mentioned, Cherky, everyone is screaming for him to get onto a development plan. And that is exactly what we're going to do right now. We're going to find the optimal development plan for this young man. Um, we obviously have him as a five star, five star. He has the perfect work rates as well. So we don't need to change anything there. But what does need to improve with him? His sprint speed and dribbling is okay. His shooting and passing isn't. So maybe that's the main thing that we want to focus on. But as he is an attacking midfield player, we do need him to be quite good with his um, passing. So maybe this is the one to go for. Attacking midfielder upgrades his pace, upgrades his passing massively. And his physicality in terms of stamina would go up as well. So we're going to start off with this. Attacking midfielder. That's how we're going to start off. And then potentially move to different things. Especially shooting later on down the line. But I think this would be a little bit more important. Because passing play for center attacking mid is crucial. Also there was a suggestion for a player that I should potentially get into the team. Here's the video. In recent videos I noticed that you don't really have a backup right back. I would suggest Calvin Amiens. He plays for Toulouse in Ligue 2. They just got relegated last season, and I think he would be a really good pickup. He could challenge Matty Cash for that right back spot in your team. I remember this guy from last year's FIFA, and he was actually really, really good. And I would like to shortlist him right now, and we're going to scout him as well, just to see how good he is. This gives us opportunities to scout players. So if you guys want me to scout players, you can let me know through the videos. But uh, don't just focus on transfer suggestions for the fan cam videos, because if it's only transfer suggestions, there's a good chance that it won't make it. If it's actually like good help when it comes to the videos, there's a, a lot more uh, of a probability of you guys making it in with like formation changes and everything like that. We had lots of good videos coming in today, but I already used a couple, so I don't want to bombard you with fan cams. But thanks to everyone that sent a fan cam. Don't think that I'm not looking into it. Even if it doesn't make it into the video, I still think about those things that you guys have suggested and potentially move forward doing those things that you guys had suggested in your videos. And yeah, thank you. You still have an influence on the videos. One massive thing that is coming in from Endowed, and he says, make another team sheet with the players that don't play when you do the training. Switch to this team sheet so it automatically puts them into training. This is something that I didn't know. 
So according to him, if I switch to my reserves team right here, right before the training day, that puts the reserves team players in there. I want to see if this is actually true. El Ghazi, Cherki, Mendes, Douglas. It is true. My man, you're a beast. You're actually a beast. You can, oh, in the top right, it does actually say team sheet reserves. Yo, and then you can press um, triangle and change the team sheet as well. Yo, that's a great tip. My man, I did not know about this. That is an amazing tip. Thank you so much for that one. That should be very helpful for you guys out there as well. That's a massive one, actually. As expected, the win against Southampton had... Oh, Southampton, we have gotten the uh, scat report on Lamte. Oh, he's only 66 rated. I think Lamte is not going to be an option for us, guys. EA need to give this man some respect. Put some respect on his name. Come on, man. That's not good enough. That is not good enough. We're not going to be able to get Lamte for now. We have a transfer offer for Heat and Do, which we have to accept because he's very unhappy. So we're going to accept it for now and wait for him to leave the squad. We have a player chat coming in as well. Bradaric, don't worry, man. Do not worry. It's going to be fine. You're going to get plenty of playtime. It's just the training sessions, mate. You don't have to worry. We're up against Chelsea right now. This is the matchup that we have today, which is the biggest one today, technically. Aston Villa in that eighth position, as expected, moved a little bit further. But also, as expected, teams like Arsenal, uh, Leicester City, Wolves, and even Everton are teams that could potentially and should be ahead of us. Newcastle United in the fifth position. Crystal Palace in seventh. That is not how the league table should be looking. So that is definitely going to be changing as we move forward. So we got to make sure that we stay within the top 10 as Aston Villa. With 20 goals conceded, uh, goals scored and 14 conceded, our defense needs to do much better. United have conceded 10 less in all those games. Wow, that's, that's big. And Chelsea is in the second spot fighting for the first position. So this game is going to be very interesting to watch. Hopefully we can get a draw out of this. Yes. I've said this multiple times against the top six teams. I love to try and get draws and hopefully we can pull it off right here against Chelsea as well. Or maybe cause an upset and get those three points. Look at that starting lineup though. Werner, Havertz, Vizca, Pulisic, Kante, Kovacic. Pfft, insane. It is raining at Chelsea's home ground. Timo Werner is anxious to get into the game. Mings and Konza will have to stop him today. Stamford Bridge. We are now ready. Let's get this game going. Hopefully a good start to the game as we tend to do against the bigger sides. We do get a lot of the first goals in these matches. And uh, I'm hoping we can do it again against Chelsea here. Who are desperate to get that first position. And they are probably looking at this and thinking Aston Villa should be an easy one. Watkins, there goes Traore now down the right hand side. On the simulations, we saw that our team was using the wings properly as Watkins was receiving a great cross on Bertrand Traore's right foot. He is slowly getting there. Grealish with the cross, Watkins in the center. And again, it's Zuma, I think, or Rudiger, actually making a good, uh, good interception for their team. It's going to be Watkins again. I'm aiming towards him. He actually gets it this time. We have Trezeguet. Oh no, that's Watkins. Akamba. I'm going to switch it over to the left. Trezeguet now inside against Chelsea. I told you we start off big into these games. Run over to the fans. Trezeguet, you freaking beast. Come on, lads. Yes, get in. This is what we need to do. Our team needs to be stronger in terms of the finishes. And that is one of the best finishes of the season. Outside of the foot from Trezeguet. Bending it around the goalkeeper. Wow, that looked very nice. Kepa actually nearly got to it he was very close but Trezeguet scores his second goal of the season I love to see my wingers get involved more often and that was a big moment for Trezeguet right there boys well done mate. well done mate that's that's actually class by the way this is also a game that works towards the fan objectives because Chelsea has an animal in their badge so uh keep that in mind as well guys these could be very important points for the season Southampton don't have any so that doesn't really matter for the fan objective. Oh, that is them coming back straight away. Emiliano Martinez. Let's go, my man. I love him so much. He's so freaking good. But here they are. Chelsea with passing play inside. Oh, my God. That is incredible passing play. I could not stop that no matter what I did in that position. That is world class from Chelsea's midfield and attack. 
no chance absolutely no chance the composure the passing play that might just be the best passing goal i've ever conceded in fifa 21 unreal and timo of course with the low driven pass the keeper no chance 1-1 chelsea's back into it as expected they are now inside the box and moved out again that is timo viana again that is emiliano martinez Poof. all right chelsea man they they look like they could score in every attack they have but watkins now with the run it's a beauty of a ball from bertrand Trore on his weak foot watkins two attacks two goals for our team watkins has made the perfect run this game is looking like it's gonna be a goal festival for everyone to enjoy Bacan Traore with the assist on his right foot. That's something you won't see too often unless we get it to a five-star weak foot. That was class. Watkins has lost Rudiger in that run. And Rudiger is just looking at the back of Watkins as he bangs it top left. And why is my manager in a shirt? EA. 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 EA Sports Vancouver, Canada. Oh, uh, guys. Nah, nah, stop the game, stop the game, stop the game. Guys, man, ugh. lads, please, please, I beg. Can we do some testing when it comes to career mode before you release these patches? It's ridiculous, man. It's actually ridiculous. I can't believe that that is a thing. My manager is walking around with the team shirt with 99 on his back with different colors. What's going on here, man? Come on, EA. Just test the game a little bit before you release these patches. It just feels rushed. It genuinely just feels rushed. I don't like it, man. Oh, no. Team of Anna inside the box. They still play it one more time. And that is Konza stepping up and preventing us from going uh, into the same position as we were in the beginning of the game, which would be a draw. And that is a big chance wasted by Aspiliqueta. Of course, Chelsea's manager completely normal. My manager walks around in our shirts. Yep. Things you love to see. Timo making a good run inside. And Golo Kante looking for the ball to thread through. But he's not going to get that as Jack Grealish instantly pushes on. Jack Grealish finds the moves to find Watkins. Watkins cuts inside. Not good enough. Rudiger is getting onto it. That is not agile enough from Watkins. We need to do better in those build-ups but we will take the 2-1 draw a uh, 2-1 win into the second half and hopefully keep it up as united is beating newcastle united who are in the fifth position in the league at the moment and Wolves is beating southampton probably pushing into the top 10 now oh that's a good run inside they had Kovacic, i think oh no that is vishja we gotta stop vishja vishja You know what? You can't complain. I, I genuinely, like, you can't complain about the goals that we concede in this game. First goal, incredible passing play. Second goal, unbelievable finish. And it's 2-2. Chelsea make it back into the game. And this, again, is why I love FIFA 21 career mode. I'm having such a great time actually battling against the AI. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I, and I hope you guys have found the right difficulty level for yourselves as well to make it as tough as it is for me. I am genuinely having a, such a great time just battling it out. And every game is a close one. I love it. Watkins in the center. He is there. Watkins over to Barkley. Barkley against his former team. Will he do well or not? That's a question that we have to ask ourselves. Is Ross Barkley giving it all? Down the right. Traore. Now it's space. Traore gets past Aspiliqueta. That's not even Aspiliqueta, is it? But again, it is uh, Dem actually getting the ball. So no corner kick for us there. We're going to be calm on this one. Played back inside. Options in the center. Watkins making a good run. Stops. Brings it back in. It's, it's a terrible cross into Nakamba, who was making a darting run through the middle. I was hoping to play that one back into him, but... It will be fine as we get it with Watkins to just play it straight back into Chelsea. Beautiful. Liverpool now 3-1 up. Simikas has scored against Tottenham. Another interesting goal there. Uh, their midfielders and defenders don't, are doing well for Liverpool right now. As Konza is doing well for us. 72nd minute. It's time for some changes. We're going to take off Nakamba who seems very tired. We need to get this draw at least over the line. 
And then Engels is going to come in for Mings, who is extremely tired, not capable of, of coping with um, uh, with Timo Werner at the moment. And we're going to bring on Solomon as a substitute for Bertrand Troy to potentially get in behind one more time. Let's build this atta attack up properly down that right-hand side with Matty Cash and more. Solomon, I need you to make that run, baby. Come on, then. Yes, Solomon. I see you, Solomon. Come on, Solomon. Keep on running, man. Keep on running. This is why I subbed you in. Far side, Jack Grealish potentially getting in there. Potentially getting in there. It was not good enough. But we still do have the ball. Solomon. Now inside. Douglas Luiz. In there. We have Watkins. One more. Grealish. Into. Oh my god. That is actually Grealish. Sorry. Mistaken. Watkins. Open. Inside the box. Watkins. Can't take the shot properly. Too slow with the turn. And not accurate enough on top of it. And now Chelsea on the counter. This is not good for us. This is not good at all. 82nd minute. He has this giant support. He's not choosing to pass it into him yet. Werner. Douglas Luiz chases it down. Fresh in the game. Douglas Luiz. Yes, well done, mate. Well done. But somehow they get the touch in from behind. Werner inside the box. Chelsea again with Martinez making yet another big save. Four minutes to go. Man, they are on high press. They are on very, very high press. I don't like this. But maybe we can use this to our advantage as we send people on runs. But Solomon now has the space to run into because these defenders are being pulled away. Solomon plays it to Grealish. Grealish over to Ross Barkley against his former side. Ross, I swear to God, you're doing that on purpose. You're doing it on purpose. You want to make it back into the Chelsea team. That is match fixing from Ross Barkley right there. Unbelievable. We're going to look for Bjorn Engels in the center if possible. Or Watkins. He's going to jump up and not get to it properly. Another corner given away. 92nd minute. We have Solomon close. Solomon is close. Can he get the crossover to the far post? He cannot, and Chelsea will get away with it. It is a 2-2 draw in the end, which I think I should be very happy with because Chelsea have had the bigger chances in this game up until the moment where we had the one with Ross Barkley, who has messed it up. I, I don't know, man. I don't feel too good about that one. I think Ross Barkley should have scored five-star weak foot, 1v1 situation inside the box, center attacking midfielder with lots of shot power, and for some reason, he could not pull it off. And it is a disappointment after all. But then again, a draw against Chelsea away from home. You can't really be disappointed with that, can you? Okay, so Tom Heaton comes to me and says, Hi boss, I was hoping to have a quick word with you. You know I love it here. I've really been enjoying my football and I like to settle things for my future. My current deal hasn't got that long to run. Do you think there's a chance of us fixing up a new contract? Uh, <laughs> and the response is, I'll deal with that situation, son. <laughs> Imagine saying son to Tom Heaton. He's like, what, 35 years old and I'm 28. Uh, yes, yeah, son, I'll deal with that situation. Don't worry. I'm just trying to get rid of you. I don't understand why Heaton is now coming in asking for a, uh, a new, uh, what's it called, a new deal as he is only a player that is about to leave the team. So I don't quite understand what's going on there. Uh, we have another heat and offer. Is that another one? We have another one coming in, don't we? Yes, Leeds United. Hey, you can have him. Whoever wants him can have him. Monthly scouting report. The first time we actually get the scout report from a five-star, five-star scout. And considering that, there were plenty of comments here. One from Sean here. He says, Johnny, if the youth players have a value over 1 million, they're good. Don't just sign players with high potential. The value shows really how good they are. I am fully aware of that, my man. I know that since a couple of years now. But the thing is, on FIFA 21, there is dynamic potential. So we can basically turn any player into a beast. They just need to be good enough. So that is why I've been signing loads of these guys. But uh, Curtis Mills right here, 425k in his value, which says he has a decent rating on him. Probably around like 53 or something. And okay um, potential. But goalkeepers are easily upgradable. So we'll keep, we'll keep looking at him. Then we have, ooh, Tom Flynn, 700k. Let's go. Let's go. All right. All right. Six foot four. Center back would be perfect. I would like to have a backup center back from Wales. Yo, Wales coming up with the bits right here. Connor Matthews, not too good. Tom Proba, not too good. And Charlie Fly, also not an interesting one. We're going to keep an eye on Curtis Mills moving forward, but we have found ourselves a decent player there. What is this? Everyone at the club has been thrilled by the progress that you made in the Youth Academy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Let's just take a look into the Youth Academy right now and see what the rating of that man was that we just signed. 
Um, here we go. Where is he? His name was Flynn, wasn't it? He's a right back. Six foot four tall right back with a 61 rating already. Boys. All right. I like it. I like it. Four star skill moves. Three star weak foot. Six foot four tall. Good stats overall. Quite balanced, actually. So potentially someone that could turn into a massive all-rounder. We're going to keep him on the balanced development plan for now. He looks quality. Absolute quality in Tom Flynn right there. And we're going to sign him up because we're going to sign these players before January. That way, we make sure that these guys are not going to be unhappy. So we're going to promote him to the senior team straight away. Flynn, welcome to the team. He can also play center back, by the way, I just saw. So that's good. In terms of potential... You can see here, a lot of people above 90. Um, and this is the only guy with uh, 87 as his max. But he is the highest rated one in the Youth Academy. So we'll keep him around for now. Ooh, sadly, a massive decrease in the potential of Lister. We have just gotten into a new month, by the way. And lots of decreases for a lot of these young players. So I'm quite unhappy with that. Lister will actually be released instantly. That is such a shame. Um, this one as well, 81 potential max. He is going to go... So uh, some of these will obviously not turn out to be massive players. Rowley so far, the only one that has kept his potential at around 94. 78 to 86 is not too bad. At least we know that he's going to be at least a 78 rated player, potentially uh, showing like great potential. I guess it is for Hassan right there. So I'm going to keep him around. Barry, sadly, not looking too good. Uh, a bit of a disappointment because I genuinely thought this guy could turn out to be decent. So we're going to let him go as well. We have only now two players in the Youth Academy left. And then we have Heaton being sold. There we go. Heaton has gone. And a Bustamante right here. Uh, we have an offer for a loan for him. He is one of our biggest talents. I will let him go on loan, but it says loan to buy. I don't want to loan to buy. I only want to loan. So... We don't want the loan to buy. We want a one-year loan. Again, if you guys remember, when you go into negotiate and only go for loan, not the buy option, they don't accept it. So maybe you have to delegate it. That's how we're going to do it right now. And hopefully it's going to work out that way. After that draw, we are currently in the eighth position. United, Chelsea, City, Liverpool making up the top four in the league. Newcastle has dropped down into the sixth position. And Wolves is slowly pushing into the top 10. Everton in that 10th spot. Leicester City surprisingly in the 12th position. Kind of stuck right there. Leeds United up next as our opponent. It is going to be a game that we play at home. We're going to sim this one and see how our team can handle the pressure in here. Obviously, if I need to step in, I will step in. Oh no, stop him inside the box. Okay, man, so far 25 minutes in, not much happening in this game, guys. Our team has been struggling to get in behind and Leeds United <coughs> seems to find more space and they've scored. We're going to jump in. We're going to jump in and I just choked on air, by the way. Oh my God, it's going to be 2-0. It is actually 2-0. We're losing 2-0 against Leeds United, guys. Oh boy. And I stepped in to make up for that, for that goal that we conceded. Leeds United is uh, not playing like a team that is belonging at the bottom of the league table, man. I am not looking forward to the rest of this game right here. We got to turn this around somehow. And I got to find the right way of doing it. Watkins, class, Grealish. Watkins again. Grealish now stops. Brings it onto his right foot. That is the Jack Grealish I know. 2-1. We're back into the game. Skip. Skip. Right now. Oh, come on. I put in a good, good interception there. No. Uh, bro, I just put in a perfect interception with my right back. It's 3-1, man. Ah, That's bad. That's not good enough, man. I'm not doing well in this game. Oh, there's space down the left with Trezeguet. Come on. We got to score this, Trezeguet. We got to score this, mate. He cuts in. It's horrible. It is actually horrible. Just again, now it's space. Come on, please, please. I need some options in the middle. There goes Jack Grealish. Right foot again. This time he gets stopped. I cannot get past this defense of Leeds United. And it's not looking like we're going to make it back into this game anytime soon. Watkins. It's a beauty of a through ball from Grealish. Watkins, you have to score this, mate. You have to score this. All right. 72nd minute. 3-2. More changes to be coming in right now. We're going to take off Ross Barkley. He's not doing much in this game. We're going to bring on... You know what? I'm bringing on Cherky. He had a massive impact last time around. We're going to bring on Solomon down the right. 
And then... Ooh, I don't know what else. What else? What else can we do? El Ghazi or Wesley? Wesley? Do we bring on Wesley? He has five-star skill moves? For what? Oh, because of the training sessions that we have put on him. Uh, I'm going to bring on Cartwell down the left-hand side. By the way, I think the 13 goals back-to-back, -back, we might just do it with Watkins because he's literally scoring every single game. We might break Jamie Vardy's record. Let's go. 90th minute. Come, uh, 90th minute. <laughs> it's the 79th, Johnny. Why is that guy running away? What is he doing? What is that guy doing? EA, I, I understand you're trying to help me here, but I don't want help like that. Jack Grealish with the finish inside the box. He gets taken out, and uh, that is... Uh, us moving into the last 10 minutes of the game. Grealish, come on. Move forward, Cantwell. <laughs> Give me an option here. Cantwell is through. It's horrible defending. Leicester. Uh, not Leicester. It is us scoring against Leeds United. 3-3 in the 89th minute. Horrible defending from their fullback with absolutely horrific positioning. Allowing me to run through right there. And Cantwell has scored it. Massive, massive goal for Todd Cantwell who gets his first goal of the season for Aston Villa. A few minutes left. Can we get the win? Can we turn it around all the way? Big steal. Solomon. Moving it forward. Watkins making a run inside. 90th minute. Why did I do that? Why? 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 Why did I do that? I thought the goalkeeper was rushing out and then he kind of stopped and I was already putting in the input. It's 3-3 against Leeds. Another draw for Aston Villa. I should have scored that. I am such a moron. No, no. <laughs> Oh, boys, I messed that up big time. I'm so sorry. It could have been the perfect comeback, but instead we couldn't pull it off or I couldn't pull it off, I should say. That's definitely my fault. Another draw for Aston Villa. We need three points, man. We need to get some three points somewhere. Looking at the league table, though, we have progressed. Yes, we've actually moved into the seventh position, guys. So... Aston Villa is doing good. I should not be complaining. We have five draws on our record, only two losses. So we are doing well. I'm happy with it, man. As long as we are within the top 10, I'm very happy with it. Currently, we are three points behind Newcastle United. But don't get me wrong, there are bigger teams below us. Spurs, Leicester, Everton, Wolves. Those teams, we, we still have to keep an eye on those. They will be settling down and doing better, getting into their form, and they will probably take over our position. So we will try and stay within the top 10 for as long as we can while we are improving our players within the squad. Our team is getting better and better day by day. We are getting lots of development in. But that is, again, the most important thing for our squad. Jack Grealish plus one. Martinez has gone up because he's so freaking good. Um, uh, Watkins has gone up by plus two. So that's really good to see. He now has a five-star weak foot, which is extremely useful, obviously. Uh, Matty Cash has gone up by plus two. Seen him defend much better lately. Uh, McGinn has gone up. Heaton has gone down. Nakamba has gone up. Draore, Wesley... Douglas Luiz, you just get it. You understand what I mean right here. Lots of growth within the team, and I want to see this continue as we get closer to the January transfer window. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I freaking love you. I had a great time recording this one. Um, fan cams to Instagram. Follow me on Facebook Gaming, where we live stream every day after 7 p.m. UK time, probably more around 8 p.m. UK time. And uh, yeah, thank you guys, man. Thank you so freaking much for the support. If you watched the video until now, you enjoyed it. So make sure to drop a like before you leave. Take care and see you next time. Peace.